Well, I'm very excited because I just moved here to New York City. From, oh, thank you, thank you. From, I heard, uh, Miami. From I'm from Florida. Any Floridians in the house? Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I'm from Boca Raton, Florida, which, if you don't know Boca Raton, there's Israel and then there's Boca Raton. <laughs> uh, fun fact, there are actually one billion Jews in Boca Raton. There's only 15 million of us in the whole world, yet somehow there are a billion Jews in Boca Raton. Um, but I am a native Floridian. My parents are from New York, though. And my mom would make fun of me for being born in Florida, to which I say, well, mom, you had me there, so didn't have much say in the matter. But like, any native New Yorkers in the house? Yeah. Okay, so like, why do you, you guys have like such a weird sense of nationalism when it comes to the state of New York? Like, you take so much pride in being from here, which is something I cannot relate to as a Floridian. <laughs> because it gets harder and harder to be proud of Florida every day. Sometimes when I say I'm from Florida, I feel like I need to apologize. Be like, hey, how's it going, Eddie? It's nice to meet you. Where are you from? Oh, oh that's nice. I'm, I'm from Florida. Sorry. I, was, I usually specify that I'm from South Florida because we do not associate with anyone north of Orlando. Pretty much how New Yorkers, how you guys feel about New Jersey, imagine sharing a state with them. That's how we feel. New Yorkers are not like that when it comes to New York. Like, you take all of New York as your own. And I know this because I did not know where specifically in New York my parents were from until like three years ago. Because if I mentioned any part of New York, if they ever lived there, worked there, crossed the street there, they claim it as their own. My mom calls Manhattan her old planet. She's not from Manhattan, but she calls it her old planet. I mentioned Queens or the Bronx. My dad is like, yeah, that's me. No, no, it's not him. If someone said Miami, I'd say, oh, that's nice. I'm from Boca Raton. I would never say I'm from Miami because I'm not. I'm from Boca Raton, which is an hour north of Miami, which by the way, an hour north in Florida is an actual hour north. An hour north in New York is like three miles. Um, <laughs> I was acting in a commercial and I needed to be in the city at 5 a.m. And this is back when I was staying with family on Long Island, 20 miles away. For me to get to the city from Long Island at 5 a.m., I had to get to the city at 11 p.m. the night before. <laughs> it's not even a joke. Uh, but uh, uh, as it so happens, my mother is actually from Cedarhurst, Long Island. I'm sorry, Cedarhurst, Long Island. Are there any, any Long Island natives in the Oh, sure. What, what pod? Lawrence. Lauren, that's South Shore, right? Oh, sure, 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 sure. Uh, I, was like, I did not know that there's an R in the middle of the word Cedarhurst, because I had literally only heard my mother say Cedarhurst. So yes, and uh, my father is uh, from Mill Basin, Brooklyn. Are there any Brooklynites in the house? Anyone? Brooklyn? Yeah, well, in Brooklyn, you all sound like Tony Soprano, and you don't have any good or bad ideas. All you have is ideas. I don't know if you've ever heard someone from Brooklyn try to say the word idea. I, I, it drives me nuts. I don't know where they're getting that extra R. It's like they're taking the R out of Cedarhurst, but throwing it at the end of idea. It drives me nuts. Uh, but my favorite uh, advice that I got about traveling, I'm trying to, like, you know, cater to you guys, too. I'll, like, back up. Uh, my favorite advice that I got about traveling in the city, my aunt said to me, she said, if you need to go to Brooklyn, go downtown. If you need to go to Manhattan, go uptown. And you don't need to go to Staten Island. <laughs> but I do love New York City. It's too cold, it's too expensive, but I love it. And uh, I'm subletting from a family friend. And she gave me a really generous deal. But part of the deal is that she gets to keep half her stuff in the apartment. So it, it looks like a 50-year-old woman lives in this apartment and not a 24-year-old man. And like, I'm a feminist and all, but like, she kept all her books there. And some of these book titles, she's got like, if love is a game, these are the rules. <laughs> Big girls, don't cry. <laughs> Everything I needed to know about being a girl, I learned from Judy Bloom. <laughs> My personal favorite. Thank you, yeah, me too. <laughs> My personal favorite. You are the power. <laughs> sometimes I look at that and I'm just like, yes, I am. <laughs> no, no. Big girls, don't cry. <laughs> and like, part of me wants to read these books just to get more stand-up material, but I'm honestly afraid that I'll enjoy them too much. <laughs> that I won't be comfortable with how much they speak to me. And like, I also feel like, I need to like hide them if the day ever comes that I actually bring a woman to the apartment, you know, when hell freezes over. But like, I, I don't know, like ladies, what do you, like, I don't know, maybe you could work in my favor if I just leave them out and she sees them and I'm just like, oh, those? Yes, it's just some of my favorite life reading. <laughs> when I'm not busy reading about female empowerment, my other hobbies include listening and being sensitive to your needs. <laughs> my name is Eddie Dats, and that's all, folks. Thank you. Thank you.